Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at multiple ways of solving the issues of overshot inset faces and bevels. So what do we mean by overshot faces? If I just come into edge mode and then control and B to bevel this, and then we select this face and then I to inset it, this is what we mean by an overshot inset. We've got to the point where a face is overlapping, so here and here, and we've got all of these edges just here that are pretty messed up. This is going to be a problem for us. It's not going to 3D print. And if you're doing things with CG, it's going to have some awful shading issues because of these overlapping faces. So how can we solve this? And you can see, I'm not sure if this is going to show up on YouTube just because of the way the video works, but we can see some issues here with the shading just in the standard view. So I'm just going to shift and D and move this along the Y axis. Let's make a couple of copies of that. So we'll do one there and we'll have a look at how we can solve these. So I did this in a video recently, it was just a short, and the easiest way to solve this is inevitably with Mesh Machine. Now Mesh Machine is a paid for add-on. This is not the only thing that it does. It actually has some fantastic features which you just can't do without it, to be perfectly honest, including making bevels act in a non-destructive way. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a playlist where I go through a lot of things that Mesh Machine can do, but it is $40, which makes it actually one of the more expensive add-ons that I have. But I should say the fact that I have it and it is one of the more expensive ones probably indicates how good it is. But we will have a look at some free ways of cleaning this up. Anyway, this is very simple to do with Mesh Machine. All you do is click on the edge before the bevel, hold control and click the edge after the bevel so you've selected all of the edges that were part of the bevel and the overshoot. Hit Y to bring up the Mesh Machine menu, hit UnFCK, click, and then you can just move backwards and forwards until you get to the point where you have no issue with this. Now this is really nice because it gives you control over how large this bevel is so you can keep it as wide as it originally was or go thinner. It's got a lot of control. And what's important about this is that it ends up with this edge and this edge being parallel, this edge with this edge being parallel. So each of your faces, so for example, this edge and this edge are equally spaced, which for a lot of instances is what you're gonna want. Now, if we just select all of these and just control X that to dissolve it, this also has another benefit of it as well. If I just go into edge mode and select all of these edges and bevel these, so we're gonna create a more complex overshoot in a bevel, this will also fix this as well. If I just go into edge mode again, same thing, click there and control click to there so that we've got everything encompassed. Click Y, un FCK, we can bring that to the point where it's fixed and then you'll see there's a propagate if we scroll up. So each time I scroll up, it goes to the next edge of this bevel to the point where you can get somewhere like there and you've completely fixed this. So this works even on more complex shapes than just an overshot face. So Mesh Machine does a lot. It mostly concentrates on things like bevels and booleans, and it is really worth the cash in my mind. Now, if you want an alternative but cheaper add-on to do this, Round Inset is an add-on, and there are other ones out there that cost $8. And being $8, it is notably cheaper. Well, a fifth of the price. But it doesn't come with other additional functionality as well, so I guess it depends what you want if you want to go for an add-on. There are links to both these add-ons in the description if you want to check them out. But not everyone's got that much money to spend on an add-on, especially if you're starting out with Blender. So let's have a look at some free ways of solving this as well. So I'm going to go into vertex mode here. And the simplest one is we're just going to shift and Z, go into x-ray mode, select all of the vertices that we want, M, and then merge at center. Now this has the issue that this edge and this edge are not parallel, neither are these, and these aren't with the outside edge. This is really ugly, but if you actually want a square in the center or a rectangle in the center, whatever it's gonna end up being, this is a way to go. I would say that it's relatively easy to solve these problems, especially if you've got machine tools. Now, as opposed to mesh machine, machine tools made by the same creator is free. It's got a lot of absolutely amazing tools, and one of them is the align vert feature. Now you do have to make sure that this is turned on. So go to edit preferences and once you've installed machine tools, all you need to do is make sure that in your preferences that you don't have the align tool, this is the align pie menu. So make sure you've got that. The align tool is for aligning objects. There's a machine tools playlist in the description so you can have a look at some of those things. But all you need to do for this is you click on your two vertices that you want to align, click Alt and A, and then we want to align these to the right. So it's now to the right. Click there and there, Alt A, and we now want to align this to the bottom. And we've now got that sorted. And if we wanted to, we could extrude this out. 
So that's one way of solving it, but it means that you lose that rounded edge. The other way that we can solve this, in fact, let's make a duplicate of this, is something that is now only possible really thanks to Blender 4, and that is a function called SnapBase. Now I should mention there are also other add-ons that can do this as well, but SnapBase comes with Blender 4, so it's free. So this makes this a lot nicer. What we can do is just select all of these vertices, press S to scale, and you can either scale it manually to get the exact size or press minus one to be the opposite of what it was. I'm gonna scale this manually to about there. And then because we've got these vertices selected now, what I can do is press G to move them around and normally this will create a massive mess. But what we can do with snap base is press B and that allows me to select each of these vertices. I'm gonna press Alt to allow me to scroll in and then you can Alt and Shift middle mouse button to move around as well. So I'm gonna make sure I select the vertex that's most off to the left in this instance, click, and now we're controlling this via that vertex. I'm gonna hit Y so we're only moving in the Y axis and then snap base will allow me to snap that to this vertex. So that now, if I just go into edge mode, this edge and these edges are parallel. Back into vertex mode and exactly the same thing, but this time vertically. So G, B to activate snap base, click on that vertex, Z, and then I'm gonna snap it to that one. And now we've got that going. So it's definitely a longer process. It's a little bit more tedious, but it does work. It keeps this rounded bevel and we can extrude that out if we want to. Now do note, I'm doing this for 3D printing or other purposes. I really couldn't care less about the fact that this is an Engon. There are lots of ways of solving this being an Engon and machine tools will help with that. So for example, I could just select every other vertex there, select that one last and join those all together to make a lot of quads, though admittedly that vertex there is gonna be a problem. We'd have to deal with that separately, probably making a triangle. Anyway, so we can deal with that if quads really do matter to you or triangles matter to you. There's lots of other ways to deal with it as well. Anyway, I did just want to finally mention another way of fixing this. This of all of them is potentially the least efficient, maybe? Not sure. Either way, I quite like it. I, I didn't actually think about this myself. This was brought up by a creator called Semi Cyclops. I'm gonna put a link to this in the description because I am literally just plagiarizing this and he deserves all the credit. I'm just gonna to add to it slightly. So do check him out, give him a like, give him a subscribe. I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. So what I'm gonna do is select any vertex, but one of these two is probably the better one to do. I'm gonna press Shift and D to duplicate that vertex and I'm gonna press Escape so that vertex is now here. There's two vertices on top of each other. I'm then gonna use that Align Pi to select this vertex here, Alt and A, go to the left, and now we've got this vertex in exactly the point where these two lines cross. Shift and S, this again uses machine tools, but you can do this in other ways, but I'm gonna move my cursor to this vertex and I'm gonna change my transform pivot point to the 3D cursor, and that's gonna allow me to select these, and I can press S, and I'm gonna scale around that pivot point of the 3D cursor, which allows me to drag out and customize this size again. So relatively similar to Mesh Machine, I wouldn't actually be totally surprised if this is kind of what Mesh Machine does in the background to make this work, but don't quote me on that, I'm guessing. So we can set this to whatever size we want, and then importantly, we're just gonna delete that vertex that we've got floating in the middle of nowhere. Now, before we end, I just want to cover one more method, though this doesn't really count as fixing the problem, it's just not gonna let it happen in the first place. So if I select this face, if I press E to extrude it and then escape, this hasn't actually canceled the extrusion, it's still there, it's just left it in place. From that point on, as long as I change my transform to either 3D cursor, if it's in the center, or in this instance, the bounding box center, I can press S to scale that down. Now this is quite nice because it keeps everything proportional to the original outside shape, but it does mean that I don't have that much control over the size of this bevel if I want to change it to either be the same as this outside edge or to make it smaller. But that's definitely a viable method to stop this being a problem in the first place, though I'm not gonna really count this as a method of fixing an overshot face. So there we go, four methods of solving our overshot faces. Admittedly, Mesh Machine I do think is the easiest and it does allow you to solve the problems with more complex bevels, but there are a number of methods that you could use to do this in native Blender that are gonna cost you nothing. As always, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and if you want to support the channel more, there is a Patreon page where you get these videos a week early, ad-free, and some other cool perks as well. Have a great day, guys.